Hi everyone, this is Garrison for Iron Kingdoms at War, and I'm here to talk about some really simple cr um, terrain bits that you can make for your uh, war machine battlefield. Uh, here are three examples of things that I've experimented with early, uh, early on. Just to give you an idea of uh, scale. Let's have Dirty Meg uh, model. Here are uh, our scale of our items. Okay, so you can get an idea of how big each of these are. Well, let's talk about these three items that are really easy to make. We're going to actually talk about the uh, most difficult to construct first, and when I say most difficult, it's not hard, so it's all relative. So anyway, this fruit basket uh, was a lot of fun to put together. Um, what I've got is a model of a work in progress version of these. So um, the idea is you got some big fruit basket you can put as part of a market uh, piece of terrain, or just you know next to a house or something. Uh, I wouldn't count this as cover because I would think most bullets could shoot through this. Uh, so I would give it concealment because it obscures the target, but uh, that's just a thought. All right. So anyway, here is um, one of these fruit baskets in uh, as a work in progress, and I just want to show you this is really really easy to make. So what I started with was a plastic cap to any kind of squirter bottle. All right. So something like this. Now I did. Um, sometimes you have to cut them down. This one would need to to be cut down about halfway. Uh, sometimes they're the perfect size, but raid the bathroom, raid your uh, medicine cabinet, um, you know, maybe some of your stuff, uh, your bathroom supplies, and you'll probably find these plastic caps that you know go on top of squirt bottles. That's going to be our frame, basically, for our structure. So what you do is, really simply, you cut up some balsa wood, all right, and this is, you can see, the bottom of this um, structure, all right, kind of like as if we're doing that right now. So the bottom of that plastic cap is here. The open side is on the bottom, which is going to become the top of the fruit basket. So anyway, what you do is um, you take some balls of wood and you just glue, cut them in little pieces and glue them on with white glue. They're going to stick nicely around the side of that thing. Just make planks and cut them up. Then you're going to want some kind of metal framing so it looks like this uh, you know, barrel is actually held together by something. This basket's held together. So then what you do is you take some uh, pieces of cardboard. I don't know if you can tell, but let's see. Quest to get revenge against snake eyes. All right, so this was actually an old kind of um, card that came with a G.I. Joe action figure for one of my kids. All right, so that's my cardboard material right there. So make straps that go around it. All right, then in the uh, top of this, um, what I've done is I've filled this, because remember, this is the bottom or the top of the cap, the, the closed side. I filled this with just bits of styrofoam um, to... Um, basically create less space I'd have to fill with my fruit if you will. My fruit is actually peppercorns. <laughs> really easy and uh, uh, spice to come by. Really really cheap and plentiful. You can get a giant you know um, canister of peppercorns for like a dollar fifty and so I stole some from the uh, kitchen upstairs and so then I just uh, painted that up. You know you could do it red, you could do it orange, or yellow, whatever. I did kind of a, a lime green with a yellow highlight to make some fresh fruit so um, that's uh, basically how you do it. So again, it's basically a captive squirter bottle. A little dressing up, a little pep few pe peppercorns. You got yourself a nice scale fruit basket. All right, let's go over to a, another pieces, uh, another one of these bits. This here is called a finial cap or finial dowel. It's a wooden craft bit that's available for most um, craft stores. In fact, here is you can see the package finial dowel cap. Uh, actually, I think about six come in these. I've already been playing with a couple of the other ones, so about six come in these. This is from the Lars Crafts lines, which has lots of little useful bits. So I just thought when I saw that in the store, that looked like a natural urn to me. So I call this my urn terrain bit. So I basically um, painted it tan. I gave it a brown, um, a, a brown wash, just to give it kind of a pottery look to it. And then I just painted that really simple little design around the edge, although you wouldn't need to paint anything on it, really. And then I just filled it with something. In this case, um, part of my wife's old makeup brush that she'd abandoned. But as you'll notice, that looks a lot like uh, static grass. So you could use the clippings um, from uh, makeup brush or static grass. Uh, no, not static grass, sorry, field grass is about the look of that. So you could put field grass in there. Um, also, if you have like coconut mat that you used to make farm field, you could use some of the strands for that. So you could just, you, or leave it empty, you know, but I kind of like the idea that, that this is going to be some marketplace and they've got all sorts of wares for sale. The third terrain bit I want to look at is, oh, is uh, this barrel here. Uh, been looking for something like this for a long time now. Admittedly, the barrels from Pegasus Hobbies are fantastic and ready to go right out of the box and look pretty. 
but um, I wanted something with a little bit of a different look to it and I wanted something just to show you how to make your own if you can't get a Pegasus Hobbies Barrels so lo and behold I was at Hobby Lobby the other day another hobby uh, store here in the United States and I saw from a brand called Woodshop pickle barrels nine pieces many pickle barrels and see there's nine in there um, I believe this was a oh, there it is the price is on there dollar forty seven for nine barrels not too bad so um, just take one out and show you their great scale barrels Dirty Meg, we're going to need you to go on the catwalk here and model for us again. All right, so there's a, so there's Dirty Meg and, and one of the barrels for scale. Okay, so the barrel is, um, you know, just this plain wood color, out of the box. Um, what I did was I try, I scored this with exacto knives to try to create some vertical planks in this uh, before painting it. To be honest, they didn't come out. Um, if I'd used a utility knife or a craft knife and carved a little deeper, that might have worked. But uh, getting in between those rims, um, those small rims, was tricky. So if I went in with a bigger knife, that's very questionable. So in the end, after I painted this kind of a light brown, washed it with a dark brown, painted on the uh, steel-colored rims, I painted that all by hand, um, I went in with a marker, uh, kind of a paint marker. It's like an artist marker, a uh, fine tip. And I just uh, drew the planks on because they really didn't show up like I wanted them to when I did that wash. So I drew all that on. and. Um, not too shabby and not too bad. So bottom line is here's three easy and very cheap terrain bits that you can add to your board just for a little flavor, a little uh, narrative. You know, um, another website I was at always talks about narrative, uh, the idea that your train should tell a story, your figures should tell a story. And um, I like this idea because I'm thinking, you know, this is some sort of marketplace where there's things brought in from all over the place. You got a wide variety of things for sale. and so. Now I'm going to continue to work on little uh, terrain ideas for a mark for market type items, and I will bring them forward to you um, after I've experimented and gotten them to a satisfactory kind of level. So that is our um, market bits, you might say, terrain pieces for your war machine battlefields. So I hope everyone enjoys that. As easy as it looks, I promise. This is Garrison signing off for Iron Kingdoms at War. Happy wargaming, everybody.